Hey everybody, thanks for joining me in another one of Chris's Bee Reviews. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Nasty Habit. It's a, it's a very cool looking IPA. You know, you got your typical, you know, kind of dark religious looking graphics on there. You got the devil, you got a, a, a goat. Uh, what it means, I do not know. Um, so in case you haven't guessed it, this is an India Pale Ale. It was brewed by the Mount Begbie Brewing Company. It's a 650 milliliter bottle at 6.0% ABV. Um, on the side here it says, allow yourself to be seduced by our nasty habit. And habit is spelt with one B instead of two B, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, a generously hopped IPA balanced by a diabolical blend of rich spe specialty malts and pure mountain water. A wicked ale that leaves you lusting for more. Um, so what I'm really curious about here is whether this is going to taste more like an uh, East Coast or a West Coast IPA. You just got your typical little uh, bronze cap there. <clears throat> and I'm going to be reviewing it out of my Mill Street Brewery Tulip Glass. Um, tulip glasses and flute glasses are really, really good for, for IPAs because it helps bring out uh, those crazy, pungent, citrusy flavors that you get with these types of beers. All right. So I'm just going to be opening up with the, a lighter, like I have in pretty much all my videos. Um, generally, I like to preserve the caps of the beers that I've reviewed, but this is a plain bottled one, so it's kind of basically rendered useless. All right. <sighs> Judging by the aroma, it does smell a lot like a, a West Coast IPA. I mean. You really, really do pick up on those like, extremely, you know, bitter uh, hops that you typically, typically, typically get with West Coast IPAs. You can already tell by the color there. Very much like a an IPA. Uh, you have a very, very nice mahogany-looking color here. You don't have very much head, which you typically sometimes uh, don't get very often with IPAs, uh, depending on really how hoppy they are. Um, but yeah, the uh, head seems to be uh, keeping up really strong there, surprisingly. Oh, those West Coast nuggets just smell so good. Now this is a filtered uh, IPA, um, non-filtered, filtered. They're both very, very good. The non-filtered ones tend to have a little bit of sediment at the bottom. Not always a bad thing. Flavor is always there. Well, wow, it's really interesting because the aromas of the hops are, are far more stronger than than the actual taste of the beer. So, sure, this is a, a nasty IPA, so to speak, but. I find that it tastes more like an, uh, an East Coast IPA. Um, East Coast IPAs tend to have far less um, of those bitter um, flavors that you pick up uh, in the IPAs. Um, the the West Coast IPAs also kind of leave like a layer on your on your tongue of this uh, IPA coating. I don't know how to explain it, uh, but, but this one this one's a this one's almost like there's a lot of flavor there, but because there isn't too much carbonation, it's almost kind of a, a very flavorful, uh, watery base. But people, if it was watery, like watery, watery, I wouldn't like it. The carbonation's still there. It tastes very good, actually. No complaints. Um, I could actually consider this to be um, a gateway IPA brew, so to speak, because those very, very bitter um, tastes that people generally don't like in IPAs um, are like, not very prominent in this whatsoever. I'm actually, uh, if, if you drink this closer to room temperature, and I'm, and I'm telling you this because the flavors in my mouth are kind of turning over here, and I, I feel like there's um, kind of like an like a English ale undertone to it, um, which is actually quite pleasant because for English ales, for some reason, I don't know why, um, I'm not a huge fan of, of, of that taste, um, but this is just something that kind of floats around in your mouth, 
after the fact, which is actually quite, quite tasty. Really liking it. Might be uh, turning me into an English ale fan. So yeah, that's not very much head anymore. I'm a little bit disappointed with the head. I mean, for me, I like to recreate the head in IPAs because a lot of the flavor is in the head of the IPAs. And look what I'm doing right here. I'm just throwing it around. Boom. I got flavor. So don't let that fool you. Don't be afraid to stir it up just a little. You don't want to do it too much, though, because you really do start playing around with the flavors a lot. Anyways, thanks for joining me. Um, I definitely find that this doesn't taste, you know, uh, like a 6% IPA. I almost feel like, you know, we're just floating around the 4 or 5 there. It's, uh, it's really, really quite pleasant. There's not a very boozy taste in this beer whatsoever. Uh, but would I give this out of 10? Uh, for an East Coast IPA, I'd probably give it a 7.5 out of 10. I mean, sure, um, it's a gateway beard and, and it has a lot of potential, um, but there really there could be more there, and that is literally the difference between whether everybody would be able to enjoy it or not. There's a lot of people I know that are just absolutely hate despise uh, the bitterness of the IPA beers, so <clears throat> this one's for them. Thanks for joining me on another one of Chris's beer reviews. Don't drink and drive. Drink responsibly. Cheers.